Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today I would like to return to our study of the corona and outline a few more lines of evidence that this region contains both condensed matter and gaseous plasma as I had discussed in this paper. The corona is clearly not solely composed of sparse gaseous plasma with a density of less than 10 to the minus 15 grams per centimeter cubed as was proposed in the standard model. You might recall that we discussed the standard model in this video. If you have not watched it yet, do have a look. Perhaps one of the simplest lines of evidence that this region contains condensed matter is that we can directly observe material being ejected into the corona from the surface of the sun as we can see in this series of videos. Just take a moment to look at these. It is not reasonable to argue that all we are seeing are optical illusions in a gaseous sun. We are seeing real structure and that implies density and condensed matter. Even in coronal loops, it is not just gaseous plasma that is being seen. You are actually seeing condensed matter here. Coronal loops are likely to be made of type 1 metallic hydrogen, just like the photosphere. This is because the loops are not only a manifestation of magnetic field lines, but also of gravitational forces. As a result, loops can have more material near their bases in response to such forces, as you can see in this figure. Astronomers have explained it this way. The hydrostatic scale height has always the same vertical extent, regardless of how much the loop is inclined, similar to the water level in communicating water tubes with different slopes. This behavior is not possible if the loops were simply made of sparse gaseous plasma. Loops are turbulent regions of the sun. They are not quiet regions which might allow for sparse gas to respond in this manner. Rather, the loops are containing condensed matter which is behaving as a gravitationally affected liquid. You are witnessing the buildup of metallic hydrogen in these structures, and this metallic hydrogen is responding to magnetic fields. Third, it is well known that the corona continuously sustains condensation which leads to the formation of coronal rain. Such rain is ubiquitous in the corona and has been described by astronomers as cool and dense matter composed of a myriad of small blobs with sizes that are on average 300 kilometers in width and 700 kilometers in length. Here is a video from NASA displaying coronal loops and associated coronal rain. Note how the rain appears to follow the loops as it falls back onto the photosphere. This is reminiscent of water droplets falling on a blade of grass. You have two distinct condensed materials here, one making up the loops, namely type 1 metallic hydrogen, and one making up the rain. Astronomers argue that the rate of descent of coronal rain is retarded relative to what gravity alone would predict. This implies that there is a certain cohesive interaction between the coronal rain and the underlying loop. It is important to note that coronal rain is best visualized in the lines corresponding to hydrogen alpha and calcium 2. These are chromospheric lines of emission, and a strong sign that coronal rain is actually chromospheric material. It is likely to be dense hydrogen which is non-metallic in nature. Coronal rain thus appears to be harvesting hydrogen atoms from the corona and bringing them back down onto the solar surface. This is the same process that occurs in the chromosphere as I had discussed in this paper and will cover in our next video. A fourth important fact of the corona is that scientists conduct atmospheric seismology in this region. Obviously, if you want to do seismology, you need condensed matter. To claim that such studies can be performed at the vacuum-like densities proposed in the standard model is not reasonable. As a point of support, just look at this small clip of a comet approaching the sun and causing a coronal mass ejection even though it did not yet reach the solar surface. Clearly there is condensed matter in the corona, and if you disrupt it, that shock can quickly be transferred onto the surface. Fifth, it is well known that the corona possesses coronal holes. These are regions which display reduced emission 
in extreme ultraviolet and X-ray portions of the electromagnetic spectrum. Coronal holes are associated with the presence of fast solar winds as particles leave the photospheric region of the Sun with velocities of nearly 800 km per second. When the Sun is quiet, coronal holes tend to be located at the poles. When the Sun is active, they can span large sections of the solar disk. Corona holes are known to be anchored onto the Sun, and this provides strong evidence that the body of the Sun is comprised of condensed matter and has underlying structure, producing the anchor points. The corona itself must also possess some condensed matter to anchor these points. Remember, you cannot anchor a corona hole on the Sun based on magnetic field arguments as the structure of the coronal hole is not directly related to the underlying magnetic field lines. In this regard, it is important to note that the corona possesses a radially rigid rotation of 27.5 days synodic period from 2.5 solar radii out to greater than 15 solar radii. Such findings support the idea that the solar body must be made of condensed matter, and that condensed matter must also be present in the corona such that we can map the rotation. If you enjoyed this video today, promote the channel, support me with a like, and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon on our next video.